Our featured speaker is Jamaican-born Davin Bennett, whom I just met for the first time today. He is now living in the Philippines since 2011 as a medical missionary employed by, the, by Philippines Adventist Medical Aviation Services. His services in health education includes cooking schools, physiotherapy, and massage. With a shortage of licensed pilots in the Philippines, Devin has decided to return to the United States for professional training in that area. He's been married for three years to his wife, Irene, who's accompanying him today. Today's lesson, Curse the Day, is facilitated by Jerry Friesen. The Friesens are... Our Heavenly Father, without you we can do nothing, and so I just ask that you may take my lips, my thoughts, my words, and make them yours so that your people can receive a blessing from sharing this special feature. In your name we pray. Amen. Naimbag na Sabado kay Zonan. Malagayan Sabado po sa inyo lahat. Feliz Sabado. Sabata Rakanaka. Bon Saba. Whatever language you speak, happy Sabbath, everyone. De nada. All right. Um, answer his call. Uh, my name is Davin Bennett. I'm originally uh, from Jamaica. And I'm sure you might be wondering, how on earth did this Jamaican kid find himself in the Philippines? Uh, I've flown from Jamaica to the Philippines. and uh, It will take you at least, you know, uh, a day's journey just on the flights alone. Um, answer his call. We're uh, by his stripes ministry. My wife is here with us. Believe it or not, that's my home where I was born and raised and grew up in uh, Jamaica. Of course, obviously, I cannot live there anymore, so I have to find um, a, a different place of abode. Um, there came a turning point in my life. I grew up where my mom had me when she was 19 years old. My dad abandoned us at the age of two. And so I grew up not knowing, you know, what path God is going to lead. And of course, being born and raised in Jamaica under poverty, I never thought to myself that I would ever fly on an airplane or even leave my country. And so the Lord opened up a way where I became a Seventh-day Adventist as a teenager. And um, ever since I became an Adventist, life just took a completely different um, turn for me, where I've been able to go places and do things that, as I said earlier, I would never have imagined um, would have been taking place in my life. One of them is, for the first time, I found myself in the United States of America six years ago uh, to the College of Health Evangelism to study to become a medical missionary. Uh, during that time, I met my wife. Um, we, I was her boss in the, um, in the student cafeteria because I enjoy cooking. And I, I didn't have the money to pay for the course. So praise the Lord, they had a work study option. So I came, I worked first, saved, and as a result, I was able to um, get the, the training. I drove that uh, bush hog, you know, mowing the lawn, cooking in the student cafe. I worked in the greenhouse hydrotherapy um, department. And um, immediately after my training, I wanted to go somewhere where I could avail myself and to see if this training was enough to have me survive in the field. Uh, usually the class would go uh, to a, a country for one month, the graduating class. But I told myself, no, I want to go somewhere for six months. So I did some research and I found out that the only country that I can go to as a Jamaican national and be there for six months is actually the Philippines. And so I decided I'm going to make it a two-fold trip. Um, I was just courting my, my girlfriend at the time. And um, I wanted to meet her family. So it was, I'm going to go there and teach, and I'm going to meet her family. So I found myself in 2011, June to be exact, in the Philippines for the first time. And I could write uh, an encyclopedia about culture shock being in the Philippines. It was just different um, for me. Uh, while I was there, I worked with the students. I love outside. And um, the beauty about being a medical missionary in the Philippines is, even though I was there primarily to teach, 
the teachers were uh, uh, required somewhat to work with the students. I wasn't there as, you know, the professor and all these students are there to just listen to me. I got down and dirty and I did some work with them. And, um, you know, we did agriculture together. A Filipino taught me how to make, uh, they call it duyan or hammock. And um, that's how I was able to get some money so I could pay for the trip and sustain myself when I was there. So it's a little crafty, and um, I enjoy making them. It took me three months to adjust to the sleeping times of the Philippines. So in the night, I had a little flashlight, and I was making these things, and I would post them on Facebook, and I would um, sell them. One of the things that stood out for me during that time in 2011 on my first trip I don't really speak the language. So there was a big language barrier. And the question is, how am I going to minister to people that I cannot really communicate with and talk with? So on our outreach, I met this gentleman and I decided he needed to do an ECG. He didn't have the money. So I said, hey, what, what from my training can I use? And I said, well, I know how to give hydrotherapy. So I put him on a 10-day uh, program where I was giving him hydrotherapy uh, for 10 days. After my mission trip, I was, it was time to leave the Philippines because I was just there for six months. And the friend that invited me to that area for a month tagged me in this picture on Facebook. If you look in the mirror, this is uh, Franco. I call him Kuya Franco, our bigger brother. That's what Kuya means in the, in the Philippines. This is Kuya Franco and his family signing up to be baptized members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I, all I knew was just to give hydro. And um, I went up, met up with him in 2013, and Queer Franco is still a Seventh-day Adventist up to this day. And so this is one of the experiences that keeps me going back to the Philippines. June 2, 2013, yes, I got married, I tied the knots, and um, that's my Filipino family. Uh, no one from my family in Jamaica, they were, able, they were not able to attend the wedding, so it was just my Filipino family that attended. My wife and I, we've done cooking schools in the different institutions, in churches, uh, you know, just sharing, because we're vegans, so share our different recipes and so on with students uh, all over. We've done, um, I've done health lectures in small areas, taking blood pressure. And um, you might not think blood pressure is anything, but in the Philippines, you take blood pressure, it does miracles. People just, they're fascinated about knowing what their blood pressure is. This is a portion of the Philippines. Imagine you lived on this island right here. And um, the best hospital is at the top of the red. And the little island is the one on the, where the arrow is pointing. And say you were given difficulties, you know, birth or some issues you're having, you would have to be a really good swimmer to go to the nearest hospital, right? <laughs> or say you have a little money, you can afford like a small boat because on this little island, there is no public transportation that brings you back and forth like a nice ferry. So you're there and you're sick. If the one pointing to the red cannot help you, you need to go to where the yellow line is pointing, where they have a better hospital on that island. The island is called Mapun, 35,000. Most of it is Muslims. They have an Adventist academy. 98% of the enrollment are Muslim students. And um, the question is, how do you reach this island, right? Um, the drive where the blue arrow is pointing is about four and a half hours to just drive from the red to the, the yellow to get medical help. It's easy to um, do this. And by the way, that's a map of the Philippines. So the island that I'm showing you is just that little small piece. They have over, what, 7,000 islands, and the dialects are just amazing as well. Um, it's easy to reach them. Just use helicopters and airplane. Two, three hours, you pick them up, and you bring them to the hospital. But if they're poor and you're, you're using this kind of technology, where do you get the money from to do it? That's the question, right? Where do you get the money from to do it? Well, it's a faith-based ministry that is designed to establish missions and organize churches to help the you know, remote people in the Philippines. Uh, the founders are Dwayne Harris. He's the founder. He's from Montana. Um, this is his wife, Wendy Harris. She was 
actually she took her nursing here in Loma Linda uh, University. And um, she's a volunteer with them. Sean Knapp, he's from Washington State. His wife, Pris Marie Knapp, there, she's a medical missionary. She's a nurse, Filipino. And uh, this is what we call a Balik Bayan, you know, someone who is Filipino born in the U.S. And um, he's right here from California. He is volunteering with um, Philippine Adventist Medical Aviation Service. Uh, Daniel is the name. And this is a team of just that Palawan group that is doing their ministry. Uh, answer his call the disciples were called matthew left all rose up and followed him there was no hesitation so when god dialed matthew's number to call him he did not hesitate he did not question anything it was enough that he was called to be with jesus that he might listen to his words he left what everything immediately it continues, it says, some of these disciples had friends depending on them for support, but when they received the Savior's invitation, they were obedient to the call, answer his call. Who else were called? We see Andrew and Matthew the same. At the moment of success, when the nets were filled with fish and the impulses of the old life were the strongest, that is when Jesus called them. He didn't call them when they were retired. And the stock market fell. He called them when they were making thousands. And the job was good. What about Abraham? Is God calling our cell phone or sending us emails? No. We might not hear his voice directly speaking from the heavens. But he calls us by the teachings of his words. To a life of what? Self-denial, hardship, and poverty. Beloved friends, it's because God has a work for us to do. And a life of ease and comfort and friends and kindred will hinder us from making the call. So you might be saying as I close, maybe uh, I'm, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. Is missionary work just for some people who is ready to renounce what? Cherish plans and family association to answer his call. It is in harmony with God's plan for the extension of his work in the regions beyond that many are what? Called. It might be local here, your neighbor there, or overseas, but all of us are called to be missionaries. I hope and trust that today, if God is calling you to serve, may you be like Isaiah who says in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, Here am I, send me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that as much as you could send angels to do this work, you have invited us, you have called us to be co-laborers with you. You're the one who is going to do the work. You're just asking us to avail ourselves to be instruments that you can use. And I just ask, Lord, that every single individual in this room will not turn off their life or put it on mute, or put it on airplane mode, or on busy mode. But may we tune our hearts heavenward, Lord, so that as you make that appeal to us today, to do whatever we can to finish this work, so that we can really go home, may we answer the call, so that we can finish what our pioneers started 172 years ago. In your name we pray. Amen.